Obviously a weed line is relatively visual at times. And as I think about weed lines or I think about current edges, you gotta remember guys, you gotta be conscious of noticing every little change in water as you travel. So whether you're the, a guy that's sitting at the helm driving, or there's two guys behind you and they're looking in certain directions, remember that morning time, a lot of times it's easier for the guys that are looking back as you're traveling forward to really notice differences in the water. Sometimes the, the glare is very, very hard to see differences and stuff and you're, you're pretty much trying to make way, but the guys who are looking in this direction behind you, which is not normal for most guys who travel on boats to think, but pick the area that's easy, you know, where you can see the best and look and notice the water. Now, before we dissect into this, when I say a weed line, a weed line can be 10 inches of grass, seaweed, that stretches along an area that's, you know, sparse. It can, I've seen it 100 yards wide and solid in some of the places in the Bahamas. So again, the reason the seaweed is there is because two currents have relatively pushed that, pushed that seaweed into that spot. That stuff has come together for a reason. It just, just didn't come together and ride in a straight line. So understand it formed in that line because there's either a temperature break or there's two differences in current right there. That's going to cause a food source. That's your food source, that weed line, or the current edge. And you're going to hear me talk about a current edge. Just as important as a weed line at times, and sometimes even uh, you're able to generate more fish off of a current edge. Now, the simplest current edge being green, green water on one side and blue on the other where we're going to get into what side you should troll, but understanding that edge or where those two pieces of water come together, that's again probably going to be a current change, a uh, temperature change, and at times that's where your food source is. Now, to get really intricate about color changes, when, they, when you, what you visually see on the surface, a lot of times dealing with some of these commercial fishing guys, I can tell you that, that that color change that you see visually on the surface as you travel, you may go down 15 or 20 feet if you, if you if some of your divers, some guys, who, modern day guys who go down and spear fish offshore. If you've ever jumped over on a blue side or the green side and swam down, a lot of times you'll notice that either the blue water or the green water has actually moved up underneath the other one. So a lot of times you'll notice that you may troll the green side and be having success on the green side of an edge, but really what's happened is, is five or ten feet underneath, that blue side has made its way underneath the green side. Nonetheless, we'll get into which side to troll, but in understanding weed lines, current edges, another thing I want to tell you as you travel and you're looking out in front of your boat or behind your boat for differences in the water, you really got to notice surface uh, structure. You got to notice what the wind is doing to the surface, what currents do to the surface. My, one of my captains, Mark Danley, used to say, Just, you, you see that edge there? If you squint your eyes, really, you can kind of see that difference. And I, you know, I have thick glasses to begin with, but nonetheless, he used to drive the boat, so it was my job to hook the fish. But nonetheless, sometimes you're looking out and you look and it seems like you see a slick or the water's different in a certain spot. Especially when there's no wind or very little wind, you're going to notice that seaweed or grass or something floating is going to change the structure of the way the water looks. The surface is going to be different. And it's always worth a look. Uh, you've mapped out your day. You've gone through where you think you want to travel for the day. But as you, as you travel in that direction and you look out there and you, and you see a, a half a foot chop, which goes to relatively smooth chop and then picks back up. There's a reason there. Now, sometimes it's boats traveling. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a stream of oil. Sometimes it's floating debris. So as you really spend your time traveling, you got to be looking at all those little differences and, and, and finding a weed line or going, you know, finding an edge is going to, you know, really increase your chances. So understand where, as you travel, whether you're looking forward or I, I, my job today is to look back as we travel that way, 
I'm scanning, I'm looking, I see differences, and if I think it's important enough, I tell a cap, hey cap, pull her back, let's go, let's go investigate what I see here. As far as the actual grass itself, definitely worth investigating, definitely worth investing some time in a direction on that seaweed. Turtle grass, you're gonna see turtle grass, it's a long leafy type of uh, grass. Honestly, not that productive. Doesn't hold that much bait. If it's the only thing around, at times, yes, maybe it'll hold some fish. But what you notice, this turtle grass that you can see, this turtle grass, a lot of times where we live down here, comes from the backwater. It comes out of Biscayne Bay. It comes out of, you know, and in the Bahamas in certain places, there is turtle grass in, in back around your mangroves and that, those kind of areas where the outgoing tide actually pushes that grass out. And a lot of times you see like a white foam with it. It's almost like a sandy foam, but that's, that's from an inshore. Not really that productive when it comes to dolphin fishing because it doesn't hold bait. So understanding those two differences with the seaweed, very important. And again, I want to get into the current again and understanding that edge before we dissect it. Blue water, smoky blue water, green water, the difference is in all of them. If you're offshore and you're running offshore and you're in generally, near shore is generally dirtier than it is offshore in most places in the world just because all of the land contents that are rolling off on an outgoing tide. But let's just say uh, um, I'm looking at a blue-green edge. That green water obviously has nutrients in it, but it generally green water has less oxygen in it than blue water. So if you have a strong deep purple blue against a green, in general, your quality of water is going to be much better in, in the blue water, and oxygen is generally what makes water blue. Some of the places we fished in the world, Yucatan Channel, it's almost an iridescent purple. There's so much life there because the, the quality of the water is so good. The green water caters to certain kinds of fish, dirtier water kingfish like, but pelagics, migratory fish, love blue water, dolphin, they're going to love the cleaner water than they are the, the dirty water. So as we kind of navigate through this, just remember when we start talking about which direction of the, uh, to troll a weed line or which side of an edge to fish. Remember, cleaner water, generally pelagic fish, big game fish are going to be more apt to hang in blue water than they are in green. So let's kind of create a scenario. Let's, let's continue with it. Let's say that you are here, okay? As I make my way offshore, I've mapped out my path. I notice a difference and I say, Cap, let's pull the boat back. I see a weed line or an edge in the distance here. I'm always going to pull that throttle back and I'm going to take one more look around. I'm going to look at my coolers. I'm going to make sure my bait box is ready. I got my dip net for my well and everything is ready to go. Now, I don't want to rush to this weed line or edge, get covered up with dolphin and not be prepared. So, take a minute, get ready. Now, as we start to go towards the weed line, a couple things I'm going to, I'm going to do. I'm not going to drive to the weed line, stop and pull it out of gear and start looking at the weeds in front of me or the edge. In general, remembering that I'm, I've mapped out my plan for the day, I'm going to know, I'm going to know which way the current's going. Because if you start getting into the fish and you turned the wrong way, it could take you a long way from your final destination, which is home here. So what I'm going to do is, knowing that that current is going in this direction, I probably will decide to troll the, uh, into the current. Opposite way the current's going, opposite way. Don't go with the current, go into the tide, that way you can always make your way back. So, I approach it, I get out two rods. In general for me, when I'm trying, it's a heavy duty spinner, 20 pound spinner, 25 pound line, somewhere in that class that I'm fishing. Two strips, two bonita strips or two small lures with no bait. Dolphin will eat them every time, and I'm going to pick up the pace and I'm going to start to travel. I want to, I want to spend some time going down this weed line to really figure out, are there fish here or am I wasting my time on this weed line? Now, how long I'm going to troll is going to matter. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. I may, I may go up this weed line and I'm visually looking for bait. I'm visually looking for birds out in front of me. Uh, when I say bait, now I'm looking over at the, the edge. You know, I may be 
100 feet, 200 feet. I'm looking for flyers getting up. I'm looking for dolphin out in front of me while we're traveling. And in general, if you're trolling, let's say we're trolling in this direction, okay? You got, and you had two lines out with two, two lures or two strip baits. As I troll in this direction on this weed line or edge, generally this, this bait's gonna get hit first, in general, because he's gonna make his way off the weed line or edge to your inside bait. Now, I'm looking in this direction, okay? I'm looking up the weed line or edge as I make my way down it. Now, realistically, I would say 30 to 30 minutes max. If I don't see bait or anything and I feel like I got a dead weed line, sometimes there's not gonna be bait on that. So I'm not gonna consume my whole day wasted on something that looks good, but doesn't have the, the ingredients that I need. So again, trolling into the current, the two rods, if I got five rods out and I'm, I, go, I go down the edge and all of a sudden I look up here in front of me and I notice a board there. Now, if there's that floating debris we're going to talk about, if, there's a flo if something's floating there and all of a sudden I notice that there's 30, 40, 50 dolphin and stuff's getting all over and there's a, maybe a bird now comes down, changes the whole complexion of having five rods out because the minute I hook five fish here, now, it's, there's a lot of disorganization. You haven't, you haven't simplified what you've done. You've hooked five fish, and in the time that you're dealing with five fish, A, you either can't find that when you go to find it again, or B, your rotation of the way you're supposed to catch dolphin to really fill the box is not done right because it's taking you too long. Now you've got five rods in the mix that generally most people don't use spinning rods for trolling. So now you've got to take five conventional rods and find a spot for them and now, now let's get the spinners out. A, it takes too long, it's not simple, and there's too many rods in the way. So I'm only fishing two spinners. That's it, and, there, and right, let's just say I'm, as I troll up this, I wanna cover as much ground as I can. So let's just say I wanna go eight to 12 knots. That's a fast clip. In general, an average dolphin troll, seven to eight knots. That would be average. But for right now, eight to 12 knots, I'm traveling, I'm moving up, I got my strips with little lead heads behind them, and I'm making way, okay? So, before we go on to that, and the next part of it, Recapture, we've made our way, we pulled it back, we saw, we saw our edge, we got everything ready, we put out our two rods, we started to troll into the current on the clean blue water side. Or the clean, you got two sides to it, remember the smoke blue water or the dirty green, now you got the clean side. I'm gonna choose the clean side. I don't wanna shag grass or pull grass off my lures. I wanna go on the better water side and in general that's what you wanna pick. If, the, if they look the same, if they look the same, spend a little time on this side and go to the other side. Now sometimes you'll have clean blue water that has an edge in it where the water looks good on both sides. Spend some time on this side, spend some time on that side. Make your way up it. Now, recapping what side to fish, we talked about that, the turtle grass and the seaweed. You saw the pictures of those, generally the good seaweed, sargasso, holding more bait. Direction to troll, into the current. How long to troll? 30 minutes, two rods max, two rods max. Again, guys, if you have two conventional rods, that's fine too. You don't have to have spinning rods, but to me, it's just easier because I can incorporate those two spinners into me doing the rotation as I catch and fill the box once I get covered up. So there you go on weed line and edge, dissect this, importance of each one. We got a few other things going on. Let's get it tight here. Yes, sir, go ahead. Great point, great point. The question was, how close do you get to a weed line if you see one or an edge? And that is a great question, I gotta tell you. Um, I would say if I had a comfortable number, 100 feet to 200 feet. If this edge or a weed line off either side of my boat, you have to remember that a dolphin at times, if, you, if you've done a lot of big game fishing, I've had dolphin come from the side of a spread with lures out 
from 100, 200, 300 feet away, and all of a sudden all you see is, is greyhounding. They already hear your boat. Remember, you're generally in a place where most boats don't travel, so the fact that you start driving up the Swede line, now you got the sound of your motors, you got your depth finder that's probably pinging the bottom, and you got two baits that are back here making sound, they're vibrating. Do not get too close to the weed line. If you're running up the weed line, 20 feet from a weed line, and I'm looking over and I'm staring at it, you're probably spooking everything that's on the weed line. At the same time, you're probably in fear of maybe running over a log that would have held all the dolphin that now you're going to spook. So 150 feet, 200 feet, long enough so you can still see action or grass. If you want to slide up there for a, a minute or two where you can look and see and kind of investigate the grass or the seaweed and look into it and Oh, there's a couple baits there. This actually looks real good. Or you can really see there's nothing there and we're wasting our time. So great question. I would say 150 to 200 feet. Any other questions? Good. Let's go to the next important segment, dolphin fishing. Talk about floating debris.